In section 7.6, the book discusses generalized momenta and ignorable coordinates. And these are ideas that we've actually seen and discussed implicitly in class so far. The equation on the top here is the Euler-Lagrange equation as applied to the Lagrangian. And this tells us, a, this provides a relationship between the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to a generalized coordinate qi and the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to a generalized velocity qi dot. And very often we found that this relationship exactly replicates uh, Newton's law, basically that the ith component of the net force is equal to the time derivative of a linear momentum. Now, these don't always have to be forces and momenta uh, in the way that we're used to thinking. Instead, we can imagine that whatever the qi derivative of the Lagrangian is, it represents a kind of force. So in many cases, that will be a linear force. In other cases, that might turn out to be a torque or some other kind of change. Uh, at the same time, we could imagine that the qi dot derivative of the Lagrangian, that represents uh, a momentum. Now, very often that turns out to be a linear momentum, but sometimes it could turn out to be an angular momentum. And so this equation, the Euler-Lagrange equation, really relates uh, a kind of force to a change in a kind of momentum. And so we refer to the left-hand side of this equation as a generalized force, and the right-hand side we refer to as a generalized momentum. And this is a nice generalization of the usual, uh, the usual description of dynamics. Uh, we can use this relationship and call what happens on the left-hand side of the equation a force, call what happens on the right-hand side of this equation uh, the time derivative of momentum, but, but we're thinking now of generalized versions of both of those things. Another upshot of this relationship is that if we have a Lagrangian which is independent of a coordinate qi, then that means that the corresponding momentum, pi, that must be a constant with respect to time. And so if we have a Lagrangian that doesn't have any dependence on a particular coordinate, then the corresponding momentum, the corresponding generalized momentum, is a constant, or in other words, it's conserved. So a nice simple example of such a case Imagine we have uh, one gravitating body pulling on another gravitating body. Uh, here's our force of gravity right here uh, from acting on one body on the other. Our Lagrangian for a system like this is given by this. So here's the r velocity, so the radial velocity of the object, and then here's the tangential velocity of our orbiting object. Uh, the gravitational potential subtracted from this is given by this expression over here and you can see that in this case the gravitational potential only depends upon r. There is no phi dependence in the Lagrangian at all and so what that means therefore is that the phi dot derivative of the Lagrangian that has to be a constant. In other words d by dt of this partial derivative is equal to the phi partial derivative of the Lagrangian. There is no phi uh, partial derivative. That's equal to zero. And therefore, this derivative, uh, which happens to be m r squared phi dot, that is a constant for this system. And it turns out that m r squared phi dot, well, that's just the angular momentum of the orbiting particle. And so in the case of a central force, a gravitational pull in this case, uh, angular momentum is conserved, and so the generalized momentum corresponding to the phi coordinate, that's a conserved quantity. Another good example, if you imagine a particle in free fall under gravitational field, uh, gravitational, gravitational acceleration g vector, the Lagrangian for that system is given by this, so here's the kinetic energy of the x, due to the x coordinate motion, here's the kinetic energy due to y coordinate motion, and then of course the, the gravitational potential energy only depends upon y. Therefore, the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x, well, that's just zero. And we know, according to the Euler-Lagrange relationship, that this is equal to the time derivative of the x partial derivative of the Lagrangian. Therefore, the x partial derivative of the Lagrangian, mx dot, well, that's just a constant. In other words, for a system where the gravitational acceleration only pulls along the y direction, the 
x momentum, that's a constant. And so here's another good example where uh, there's no dependence in the Lagrangian on a particular coordinate, and so the corresponding momentum for that coordinate, that generalized momentum, is a constant.